SpaceX's Starlink project is an internet constellation that will provide the world with low-cost, high-performance internet around the world. But it's not just about letting you scroll TikTok for a cheaper monthly data plan. Starlink is going to change global politics and businesses in several ways. In addition to giving you cheaper monthly data packs, of course. Nearly 40% of the world still doesn't have stable access to the internet. That's about 12 times the population of the United States. For a large number of them, it's because they don't have the infrastructure to get online. But all that is about to change. Welcome back to our channel. Before we dive in, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you are notified when we upload a new video. First things first, exactly how fast will the internet be when Starlink is up? Estimates say 40 times faster than today's high-speed internet in America, and it will get faster once the entire constellation is complete. The satellites will use lasers to communicate with each other, so there's lower latency over long distances. Light travels faster through space compared to fiber optic cables on Earth. Basically, you'll be able to play games, watch movies in high def, and do everything you want to do without even thinking about speed. Starlink will place 2,000 small satellites into orbit by the end of 2021, and the ultimate goal is to put 30,000 of them into space. Currently, the satellite internet that we have uses a large spacecraft that orbits 22,236 miles above a particular spot on the Earth. But at that distance, there are major time delays in sending and receiving data. By being closer to the planet and networking together, Starlink satellites will carry large amounts of information quickly to any point on the Earth, even over oceans and hard-to-reach places where fiber optic cables can't be laid down. According to Elon Musk, the Starlink network would be able to provide minor coverage after 400 spacecraft are deployed and moderate coverage at 800. And as it brings globalized internet access, the fundamental cultural makeup of the internet is bound to transform. It only makes sense. A massive influx of users will flood the digital network, and we will see a wave of cultural change to digital communities and the formation of new digital ecosystems. Not to mention how access to the internet will provide new forms of prosperity to billions of people and disrupt the traditional power dynamics of the world. Right now, a little under half of 7.8 billion people don't get regular internet access. These tend to be people from lower income and non-English speaking regions of the world. Plus, the governments of many countries limit their residents' access to the internet. Paranoid governments are increasingly blocking the flow of information in certain countries, and it is a disturbing trend for such a liberating technology. Despite this lack of access, there does exist an appetite for connectivity. Before we dig into Starlink, it's important to understand the state of the internet today. Our world's internet traffic is dependent on a small number of fiber optic cables more of which are running along the bottoms of our oceans, which makes them vulnerable. They can be disrupted by earthquakes and anchors. Sharks could chew on them. In one case, a Vietnamese fisherman scavenging for copper wire pulled up miles of fiber optic cable, disrupting one of only two lines connecting the country to the outside world. But the real issue is when these cables cross into a country's border, because it's here, at the choke point of information, that governments gain control. And unsurprisingly, China comes in last for internet freedom. Not only do they ban Gmail, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and many other services, they also use the internet to spy on their citizens and punish them for what seems harmless. Sadly, this special case is now becoming the norm for most governments. Countries like Brazil and India, which have huge populations, are losing internet freedom. But the good news is, technology always finds a way. And in this case, the solution is Starlink. They're making their innovations user-friendly, so all you have to do is plug a medium pizza-sized box into the wall and point the antenna at the sky. A few seconds later, you have high-speed internet. This connection would even evade China's firewall and attempts to control information. Now, as Starlink comes online and makes access possible for nearly 4 billion people, we can expect the makeup of the internet to change. That includes the language and cultural norms of digital communities, not to mention more business opportunities. More individuals in these countries can start small businesses, and existing entrepreneurs will now ask questions about services they can offer the new users. In low access areas, there is a clear lack of an IT industry or IT skills. We can expect to see growth in easy to access e-learning platforms, platforms like Skillshare and Khan Academy. These platforms will be mobile friendly and focus on core business skills like communication, marketing, product design, and more. There will even be opportunities to provide training in online security and privacy tools, proper online banking habits, avoiding scams, and the importance of strong passwords. But more importantly, increased internet access would turn the global labor wage dynamic over on its head. People in low-income regions will find a world of opportunities to sell their talent online, and businesses in developed countries will have a host of new digital services to choose from. 
On the other hand, though, we do risk workers in these developed countries experience wage disruption and losing their employment. It's going to be great for companies that want to save money, but not so good for the labor economy. On the bright side, there is an opportunity to educate newly online people on how to become financially independent by learning to utilize the full value of the internet. The internet has created so much wealth and prosperity that it now represents a powerful opportunity for new users to build a stable and more resilient life. The bottom line is that whether you already have access to the internet or not, the Starlink program will change how you browse and the information you find on the internet. It's important to keep track of this development because it's going to impact everyone on the planet in some way. But Starlink isn't entirely invincible. There are ways the governments could get around new internet freedom if they wanted to. They could ban the antennas, for example. But remember how we said technology finds a way? Soon enough, the Starlink home box would get smaller and the antennas would shrink further in size. And with 3D printing now building everything from airplane parts to whole buildings, who's going to stop someone? from making a tiny antenna in their bedroom in the course of a few hours. Well, there is another way. Governments could thwart Starlink, which is the more likely option. They will tell the company and its founder, Elon Musk, to turn off the satellites hovering over their space, or face consequences that range from embargoing his other businesses to just shooting his satellites out of the sky. Sounds easy enough, but the problem with governments banning antennas and shooting missiles at low-orbit satellites is that it raises the cost of internet censorship. Instead of simply turning off access at the choke point of a fiber-optic cable, they will now have to hunt down citizens who have dishes, suffer the loss of businesses with some of the world's most successful companies, or risk outright war. And anything that raises the cost of censorship is a bad thing for governments and a good thing for their citizens. Starlink is already beta testing, serving over 10,000 customers, and they have over 700,000 applicants waiting to try the service themselves. Soon enough, Starlink will expand to the rest of the US and Canada. They have asked the Federal Communications Commission for permission to deploy up to 5 million user terminals, which they unironically call Dishy McFlatface. It receives transmissions from Starlink's low Earth orbit satellites. The service will cost you between $50 and $80 a month, and the one-time fee for the user terminal is said to be $499. When a huge company like SpaceX sees success in a particular field and gains media attention for it, other companies are bound to follow. There is now a race to dominate space, as Amazon comes in with a $10 billion plan for 3,236 satellites. They would be joining Telesat, a venture backed by the Canadian government. But of course, Starlink is going to get there first, even if Elon Musk tends to give ambitious timelines for his projects. SpaceX is already deploying satellites at an insane rate, and their new facility in Texas is only going to speed things up further. They expect to have almost global coverage by next year, which is great for us. Think you might subscribe to Starlink for 80 bucks a month? Is that too much? Let us know what you think in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure to give us a like and check out more videos like it on the Simply Tech channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.